We're going to be talking now about some troubleshooting. These are little problems that happen with any carpet cleaning machine pretty much at any time. And uh, what we need to know is how to solve these problems quickly. So things like, I've got the machine running, it's making all the right noises, but I've got no vacuum. What's the problem? Well, for a start, have I got the hose connected? Is the hose all connected? Is it the right hose and we haven't got a joiner somewhere? Let's have a look. Make sure the hose is connected into the machine. Another problem you can get is sometimes this whole lid will be sitting on the little catch here and it's not sitting and sealing down there. So just make sure it's clipped in properly and it's down on there. Another thing that can happen is sometimes if the waste dump valve is up it's going to be sucking back in there instead of through the hoses there. So yeah, make sure everything is nicely closed, make sure that's on tight, make sure all that's in there and you should be able to feel that full vacuum pressure by putting your hand over the end there. It'll suck down tight onto your hand if you've got a good tight suction there connected onto your wand and you should really hear that hissing noise in your wand. Yeah, other things that can happen too is uh, as the hose ages it can start to get little cracks in it and any little crack along there you'll start to lose vacuum so make sure your hoses are all in good condition. You'll generally hear that hissing noise somewhere along there. It may be where it screws into here. These little fittings on here simply screw onto the end of the hose there. It's a backward thread, so if that's working loose at all, you can hear that slop there, they'll be hissing in through there and you'll know you're losing vacuum. So just make sure they're screwed on nice and tight. Another thing that can happen too is sometimes, after a while, that rubber may split and just doesn't seal properly onto there. Other things that can happen too is uh, your, vacuum, uh, your filter basket is clogged with all sorts of rubbish coming out of the carpet. That's another little thing. And if it's got a bit of foam in there, the foam can block the little ball valve and that will stop the vacuum as well. That's a safety feature to stop you putting water down in through the vacuum motors. So make sure everything's nice and tight and fitting as it should. And uh, that's clipped down properly. That's down there, vacuum seal, good all set to go. And another thing here sometimes, yeah, if you've left that open, air can get back inside through there and of course you're going to lose vacuum that way as well. So make sure that's off there if you haven't got your drain hose connected. Here's yet another thing. This waste pump has a little one-way valve in there. If that gets clogged or stays open, the pump won't suck properly and it won't suck the water out of the machine. So because it's the one-way valve's not working, your auto pump out will stop working and that will give you a loss of vacuum as well. Another reason for loss of vacuum could be this inlet port here. This is where we plug our booster pack into. So if that rubber is deteriorating and not sealing properly onto there, you could get air leakage in through there, which will cut your vacuum at the wand. Another reason for loss of vacuum could be just the way you hold the wand. The wand has these two flat jaws here and they need to be flat onto the carpet there. So you've got to make sure your wand is just at the right angle. If it's too far down the air will escape through the front of the wand. If it's too high up it'll be escaping this way. You need to have that wand so it's sitting flat onto the floor and you'll feel the suction pulling it down onto the carpet. Sometimes you'll be backing up to a wall and the wand will come up like this. No, it's just not working at that point. So make sure when you're doing your passes, you stop well before you get to the wall and you make sure that you've got that full vacuum the whole time. It should be sitting around about waist height. Now, there's the handle there. You notice when I'm using the wand, I let go of the handle. It's the machine that's going to be doing the work, not you. Don't involve your back. All the pressure is just from there down to the ground, not all the way up my arm and down the spine and into the ground. 
So when the wand is at that comfortable weight height, I can just work the wand like that. And that will be right at just the right angle to suction down onto the floor. Another problem we can get is loss of water pressure. So you're squeezing the trigger and nothing's happening. Is the pump running? Check that the pump's running. And if the pump's not running, why isn't it running? It may be because it's run out of water. Down inside there is a little float switch. If the water level gets down too low, it'll switch the pump off, save the pump running dry. So if your pump stops running, just check that you've actually got water in there. If you've checked the water and you've got water pressure and it's still, or you've got uh, the motor running and you've got all the right noises, but you've still got nothing coming out in here, it could be that these little quick connects aren't fully engaged. They might be just there, but not quite clipped on. So you make sure that's clipped on, you get that click and that's on there nice and tight. Same thing this end. If it's not quite clicked in properly, it won't allow the water to flow. There's a little valve in the end of this piece as well as the inside piece there. So if these aren't meeting and opening those little valves, you won't get pressure. So just make sure they're clicked home and you'll have full water pressure. Sometimes you may get no water coming through. Your pump's running and you think, oh, what's happened here? I've just filled the machine, but they've still got no water. It could be that you've got an airlock in the pump. So just squeeze your trigger and let the machine run for a little while. This machine will automatically uh, prime itself and eventually the water will come through. So we've got no water pressure. We think we've got an airlock in the pump and we need to prime that pump. We can just do it with this short little bit of hose. So let's disconnect it from the wand. Plug this in, poke that into the vacuum and then seal that off there. Run the two vacuum motors for a little while, making sure you've got a good air seal and when you see the water coming through there and into here, you know your pump's primed and ready to go. Another thing that can happen with these machines is sometimes the pump won't work. You switch it on, we've got a red light, but nothing's happening. There could be a couple of problems here. One, it could be out of water. If there's not enough water in there, there's a little safety switch in there. It's a little float switch, which if there's no water in there, it'll switch the pump off so it's not going to run dry. Another thing that can happen, just check the reset button. Give that a press. If that fixes the problem, good, off you go again. So if you've plugged in your machine and it's still not working, what could be the problem? Maybe there's no power on. Maybe the power outage is, is there for some reason or other. Check that the power cords are actually working. You may need to plug a lamp, a lamp into there. So go and ask your customer if they've got a spare lamp, they can just plug into there just to make sure that you've actually got power in your lead. So if you go to start the machine and there's just no power and none of the switches work, do the little lights come on? If the lights come on, it means you've got power there. So there's probably something wrong there. But if no lights come on at all, it means that you've probably got no power. Why? It's possibly that you've got the two power cords plugged into the one power circuit. Uh, that's quite a common sort of a thing. Make sure you plug one into the kitchen, one into the laundry. But if your customer has decided to make a cup of tea at the same time, puts their jug on, that can overload the circuit. So the circuit breaker will switch off in the house. So check this one first. If that doesn't fix it, then go back to the switchboard and have a look back there. And just turn the circuit breakers on, go and tell your customer, hey, you might have to wait for a little while before you have your cup of tea. One major problem we have in the carpet cleaning industry is sometimes Somebody else has used a foaming type shampoo on the carpet and if that ever happens and we're cleaning we can get a lot of foam coming through the hoses, it'll come into the machine and you'll see all this white foam develop in here. That can fill your machine up quite quick, not with water, just with foam and that can get sucked down through the vacuum motor so just keep an eye on that. 
always look at the color of the water coming out through into this receptacle here. If you see it white and foamy, you may need to add a bit of defoamer. When you add defoamer, put the defoamer in the hose. So a little bit of liquid foam defoam it down in through the hose, let it suck that through the hose and that'll kill off the foam even before it gets to the machine. Don't put the defoamer on the carpet. The defoamer needs to go down into the hose there and that'll keep your machine running really well. So if you didn't catch it and you found you've got a machine full of foam, get a little bit of defoamer and just sprinkle it into the machine here first and that'll help kill off the foam in there and then dump it out through that valve into your bucket of water and that should solve your problem. Now, if you happen to overfill the machine and or the waste pump hasn't been pumping out enough, the water can raise up there, it will get through down into there and if that little ball valve doesn't quite shut it off, you'll end up with water actually spraying out where the air should be coming out. So if you see that, uh, you better stop the machine pretty quick and make sure that you empty that tank out. So when we go to disconnect these hoses, there'll still be that little bit of pressure in there. Don't forget to release the pressure with the trigger before you disconnect the hoses. But sometimes you'll forget about that and you'll take the hose out it might, come, it might be a little bit harder to get out than that, but if you forget about that and you've taken it out, you've got pressure build up inside there. And sometimes the only way you can release that pressure, get your spanner, just undo that fitting. Slide it out that little bit. When the water starts to dribble out, wind it back in again, and you should be right to go. When we're using an auto fill machine, we're filling it with this hose which will connect to the laundry tap. So disconnect your hot water tap from the washing machine and connect this hose to it. So you've connected the hose and your machine's not filling. What's wrong? Did you turn the tap on? Now this hose fitting here that connects to the laundry tap only, it won't actually fit to an outside garden tap. If you do need to plug into an outside garden tap, you're going to have to use an adapter but talk to Tam, he'll, he'll be able to supply you one. If you've got uneven sprays, so this spray down here should be spraying out nice and evenly out from either side at a, probably a 110 degree angle. If you've got a little V shape there, so we're looking there and you see a little V shape, and it looks dark, it's probably got a blockage in the jet there. So we're going to have to undo that with a spanner, clear out the blockage and refit that, line up the jets in the correct fashion there and away you go. So if our fittings are all connected and we've still got no water pressure, you might need to check inside here are some little filters. So you just need a spanner to undo this nut, take the little filter out, clean it off, and then slide it back in. Check that the hole in the spray jet is open and you should have water pressure again. If you still haven't got water pressure, then maybe it's the little filter in the bottom of the clean water tank. Just check that. It looks like a little mushroom. It's right down the bottom of the tank and that's there to filter out anything that might have come through in your water supply.